Hey, Miles, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, yeah, if you're ready, uh, we can just get right into it. Yeah, right into it, let's go. Yeah, uh, first thing for you, I mean, you know, with everything going on right now, uh, you know, I'm not sure how you're staying in shape and everything, you know, a lot of other guys, uh, you know, having to use uh, some different outlets uh, that, you know, they've made connections with in the past, but for you, what are you doing right now to stay in shape, you know, and also, you know, stay safe and healthy, uh, you know, trying to find that balance between uh, the two? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really fortunate to be down here in South Florida, um, you know, real close to our spring training complex and um, a lot of people that I know down here, other, other athletes, uh, you know, live down here. So I've got no shortage of uh, resources as far as uh, playing catch and, and exercise and staying in shape. I got some kettlebells in my garage and an exercise bike, and I'm running around after the kids and the pool. So I've been um, been able to stay in, in pretty good shape. And for you, you know, coming off, you know, the past two seasons with the Cardinals, I wanted to ask you, you know, going into spring training, you know, feeling everything out, and then obviously, you know, having to be halted by the pandemic, what's one or two things that, you know, you've been looking to, uh, you know, improve on just with your own game, uh, you know, going into the season? Is there anything that, you know, you felt that you were, you know, improving on uh, before all this happened? Um, you know, there's some things that I was trying to get back to, um, trying to replicate a uh, certain break on my pitches that were very successful in 2000. Uh, 18 that kind of kind of slipped in 2019 a little bit um, and then you know just always trying to sharpen up everything uh, improve the, the mental game and the game planning uh, you know one of the things that you're able to do with all this downtime is watch a lot of video and uh, you know go back and see you know reassess what you're doing and, and kind of look at it from from an outside perspective you know almost like it's like you're watching someone else as opposed to, you know, watching yourself and kind of critiquing it that way and uh, trying to go about, you know, fixing, fixing mistakes and, uh, you know, just getting better at kind of everything. For sure. And one thing I wanted to ask you was just because it's interesting, you know, you went overseas um, a few years ago now. Uh, one of the friends of the show, uh, you know, that we've talked to a few times, uh, Dan Straley, who just went over to Korea uh, to pitch this year, uh, trying to get back to the form that you know he's looking to uh, you know sustain in the major leagues. But for you, how was your time overseas? You know, did you really feel that it helped you uh, just in terms of you know maybe gaining more confidence and you know learning how to uh, pitch a new way? How did that go for you? And you know, just looking back on that time, is it something that you know you would recommend to other pitchers? you know, might not be performing at the level that, you know, they wanted to? Um, you know, it's a, it's a really unique situation to get a chance to go over there. And I think as far as, you know, the self-improvement goes, I think it's a little bit of everything. You know, there's some somatic confidence, doing well in a league that you know is very competitive, uh, being able to get outside my comfort zone and adjust – um, and kind of grow up as a person and not just an athlete um, and deal with that type of, I don't know if I'd call it adversity, but, you know, to deal with that kind of uh, outside force and also learning some different ways to, to go about the game and watching, you know, you, you grow up your whole life watching guys play the game a certain way and, you know, we're, we're kind of setting our ways here and they're setting their ways there. I think there's a lot that the two leagues and types of players can learn from each other and just being able to absorb uh, what worked for me, kind of a kind of try everything and see what sticks. Yeah, and, you know, those those new training techniques and those those new habits, getting back to some of those things. And, uh, you know, when when you're out in a country like that, there's there's a lot of distractions, but there's also not as much to do as a foreigner almost. So I felt like I could really, you know, sink my teeth into the baseball side of things and, and really devote myself during that time to my craft and, and get better that way. 
And, you know, coming back, uh, you know, in 2018, I'm sure, you know, you don't like to, you know, always dwell on the past or anything, but, you know, coming back, having s such a successful season, what was it that led you to, you know, have such success? I mean, coming back, I mean, what was something that, did you refine your technique and your mechanics? Was it just, you know, more confidence as you came back and realized that you could do it at the highest level? I mean, what was it that sort of, you know, made it all click for you? Uh, you know, in 2018, and, you know, looking back uh, on that successful season that maybe you could, you know, build off of, you know, in 2020, if there is a shortened season or whatnot? You know, there were some, some mechanical adjustments that allowed me to be a little more efficient and, you know, throw strikes a little more consistently um, with all my pitches. And, and that's huge when you talk about uh, attacking major league hitters, uh, you know, just, just being consistent that uh, from a confidence standpoint if I can locate you know location kind of plays everywhere obviously you know your mistakes may get hit a little harder and a little further over here because because the players are bigger and a little stronger but you know good uh, you know have good mm -hmm. location will travel so to speak so I knew that if I just kind of stuck to pitching at its most basic form its most basic level uh, you know Fastball away, fastball away. You know, curveball into the zone, just get it under the zone. Uh, you know, just execute. You know, I think as as pitchers get older, they realize more that it's not about necessarily beating the hitter with your stuff. You know, I don't have to necessarily beat him with my fastball. I just have to beat him to the spot. I don't need to really reach back for anything extra on my two strike fastball. Then I gave him on my one strike fastball, but if it if it needs to be up, because that's where I've I, you know if I've set the trap for for the high fastball, I just have to get it up. You know, I have to get him to take the bait, and I have to get it there. I don't have to throw it any harder. I don't have to throw a two strike curveball any harder to get it into the dirt. I just have to get it into the dirt. Sure, and you know, for you, you know, as a team collectively, I wanted to ask you you know, being with the Cardinals, uh, you know, being in a few different organizations, what is it about the Cardinals? Obviously, you know, they, them giving you, you know, the opportunity to come back to the States, but, you know, just the success that they always have, you know, I always feel like, you know, even if they're not in the playoffs, you know, they're five games out. I mean, they're always, you know, successful. They're always, you know, winning at a high level and, you know, can sustain it, you know, throughout the years. What is it about them that, you know, I'm sure you like and, you know, allows you guys to all have success uh, as a team and not just as individuals? Um, I would give tremendous credit to the, the Cardinals, uh, their front office and their scouting department. Uh, you know, from a scouting department sense, I, I feel like they leave no stone unturned. Uh, you know, you see them draft and develop a lot of guys from later rounds, guys that we have on our big league team right now that weren't necessarily, you know, first, second, or even, you know, 10th round picks. Um, you know, they, they find those value and they, they know how to develop those guys. And from top to bottom in the organization, from what I've seen, um, you know, in spring training and seeing what goes on with some of the younger guys, uh, you know, being down here at the spring training complex, I can see, uh, you know, over the winter, what they're doing with the younger guys and things like that. Um, just an overall commitment to doing things the right way, even if it's the, the little things and it's doing those things the right way. And it's a, it's a commitment to winning. Um, you know, I think if you instill a, a culture of winning and a winning attitude, even from the lower minor league levels, uh, some minor league systems, you can tell that there's pure emphasis on player development. You know, they don't care if their double A team goes, you know, goes 40 and, you know, 40 and a hundred, they just want to develop their players. But there's, there's a lot to be said for the development of, of attitude and the way to go about things mm -hmm. and, you know, what it takes to win it at, at a higher level. It's, I think it's tough to take guys who are, you know, very, very talented, but not used to winning and then put them in a situation where, you know, in the major leagues, it, it has nothing to do with what you do as an individual. It has everything to do with, you know, winning the games and, and getting to the playoffs and, you know, playing that, winning that last game of the season. 
And for you, you know, playoff baseball last year, you know, you guys made a pretty successful run at everything. What's it about, you know, the team before, you know, the whole pandemic thing hit, but, you know, in spring training, what was kind of, you know, the attitude just in terms of, you know, what were you guys looking to, uh, you know, achieve as a team? I mean, was there anything that, you know, you guys were focused on specifically that, you know, was going to lead to success this year? I mean, what was it like just in terms of, you know, the camaraderie and, you know, what was you know, the goal for you guys? Uh, we have tremendous uh, team camaraderie. Um, and I think, you know, using that to our advantage is a, is a big part of what we do. And, you know, when we're out there, it's, it's not about your, your individual numbers. It's about, you know, getting that win for the team, whether it's, you know, diving and making a play or, you know, getting a guy over or, you know, not being selfish in, in whatever you're doing. And, and our goal is to be playing in that last series of the year. You know, our, our goal is October or November, or wherever the season's going to finish this year, who knows what month that is. Um, but, but that's our goal. Um, you know, and it starts with game one, it starts in spring training. It starts with, uh, you know, zoom meetings over the phone these days, just keeping everyone on the same page and everyone kind of kind of working in the right direction. And, you know, how many guys do you keep in touch with this in terms of, you know, some guys, you know, a lot of guys obviously, uh, you know, are all over the country right now, but are you keeping in touch with, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, maybe just, you know, mostly pitchers and catchers? I mean, what's it like with just staying in touch with them? So when, you know, you guys are all back together, uh, it's not like you've been apart <laughs> for too long. Uh, you know, I do my best to try to keep in touch with everybody. We have, you know, team group messages and we have, you know, group phone calls, uh, zoom calls, video calls, um, uh, you know, text messaging, you know, even goofing around through social media, any, any outlet you can take to, you know, say hi to a guy, you know, tell him happy birthday, ask him how his family is, all this nonsense. Uh, there's still a few guys down here in Florida. So, Bumping into those guys whenever I can is always a, a, a real treat, and uh, you know, by any means possible, yeah, for um, sure. staying in staying in contact. So that way, when we all get back together, we can do our best to hit the ground running. And you know, this season obviously is you know for a first for everyone, just in terms of everything going on. But for you, I wanted to ask. You know, with everything going on, you know, there's a lot of different complicated stuff. With you know the contracts and you know the Players Association and Major League Baseball. But for you, you know, if there is a season, I mean, what are you looking to, you know, gain out of 2020? Not only for yourself, but, you know, for the team and Major League Baseball. I mean, is there something that, you know, you think that, you know, might be able to, you know, happen in order for baseball to come this year? Uh, I'm just trying to win. Uh, you know, I want to win as many ball games as I can, however many starts I get that's how many wins I want to have, um, you know, however many innings I get, that's how many, uh, you know, scoreless innings I want to have. I just, I just want to win and I want to have fun. I want to, you know, I want to be with my teammate. I want to be with my boys, uh, enjoy this season. And, you know, I think it's going to be a weird season, however it happens. And I want to do my best to enjoy it. And I want to do my best to win. I don't, um, I don't really care about, you know, individual numbers. Uh, you know, if I go, if I get a win and, you know, keep us within striking distance or if I get a no decision and, you know, if I leave the game and it's a tie game and we win, uh, then I feel like I did my best to to give us a chance to win. Uh, I, I think a result of that is throwing a lot of innings. I'd like to throw a lot of innings. I, you know, I like to eat up innings. That's, that's kind of my thing. Try to keep a low pitch count and, uh, you know, get out quick. I'm not necessarily trying to strike out everybody, just – just want to get some quick outs and, you know, get a win and get everybody yeah, back to their for sure. their wife and kids as quick as possible. <laughs> uh, and, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, in the beginning I asked, you know, how you're staying in shape and everything. What's it like for you just in terms of are you doing, you know, simulated games? Uh, you know, you're throwing once or twice a week, you know, separating it, uh, you know, out like you would if you were doing uh, real starts. Uh, what's it like for you, you know, trying to keep that – you know, game-like atmosphere 
and you know that routine that you know starter pit, starting pitchers are used to uh, during this time. Um, I mean, I'm I'm throwing bullpens uh, two three times a week. Uh, you know, I'm getting some some light pens. I'm getting some heavy pens. A little bit of up and down here and there. Uh, you know, if I'm throwing a light pen, then I want to get a good run in afterwards to just kind of just simulate that that overall body fatigue. Uh, it's pretty hot and humid down here in Florida, so it's not tough to get to get all worked up and get a good sweat in. Uh, so it's a little bit of everything. You know, mixing it up, doing my best to stay in shape and stay sharp. And you know, with the whole pandemic thing going on, I mean, is it bad down there in Florida? Just because you know we're obviously not in Florida. I mean, what's it like down there, just in terms of you know you being able to see other people? Uh, obviously, you know, it was a concern. Uh, you know, originally uh, down in Florida, obviously with everyone having the you know kind of evacuate the training facilities. But how is it now? Has it calmed down? And I mean, what's it like with uh, life down there, uh, just even outside of baseball? You know, outside of baseball, for me, it's semi-normal. You know, I'm not, I'm not out doing a whole lot. Uh, you know, we take the family to the beach. We're outside in our pool. Uh, you know, we see our 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 close friends and family. You know, very sporadically, and everyone you know is doing their safe and doing their safe thing, and we're keeping our distance. Uh, I mean, if you go out to the store, it's kind of weird, but you know, people wear masks and stores aren't crowded. I heard the mall is weird because you got to like ring a doorbell to all the stores and then they follow you around and it's limited people. But I haven't been to the mall, so not too different there. But if you drive around, if you just drive around town, it doesn't look any different. You know, right, our cool. beaches are open, so people are at the beach. People are on their boats. People are outside running around playing at the parks. You know, the swing sets are closed, but... The grass fields are open, so and Jupiter is not a very crowded place. Yeah. So it doesn't um, it doesn't lend itself to that kind of feeling that you know even if even if some things are shut down, it doesn't feel like it because you're not walking around city streets looking at you know closed up shops and and, and restaurants and stuff. Cool. And you know, for you, you know, with baseball and everything going on, obviously fans are you know. A big part of the game, uh, you know, just talking to other guys, uh, you know, trying to stay in touch with fans. Uh, we had a few of the guys, uh, you know, doing that uh, players league on uh, MLB the show. You know, come on and talk about that. But with the fans and you, I mean, is it something that's going to bother you just as a pitcher? Is it something that you know might actually help you just from you know, especially being in away parks? You know, the lack of noise. What's it going to be like just in terms of the no fans? And is it really a big deal just in terms of, you know, kind of mim mimicking it? Uh, you know, what you see with the Korean League, you know, they're putting stuffed animals. I don't know why, but they're putting stuffed animals in the uh, seats. What's it like for you with the fans, though? Uh, I think it'll, it'll feel weird, but, you know, you go to Miami, Cincinnati, you know, you go to... We go to places throughout the year where there's pretty much nobody there, and it's you know it's a thousand people in Cincinnati on a weekday in the middle of summer. It's not going to be too, it's not very loud. It's not going to be too different. Um, it'll feel weird in some places, you know, just that that big emptiness. I think the the indoor stadiums, um, and the and the domes and stuff, retractable roof, those kind of places, those will feel weird because you know. When there's no fans, there's no noise, like everything kind of echoes. Okay. It'll feel like, you know, like during batting practice. So that'll be a weird feel, but, uh, you know, personally, I don't, I don't think it's going to bother me a whole lot. Um, I like the fans. I like people yelling at me. I like going to, I like going to Wrigley and being in the on deck circle and the, you know, the four guys drinking beers telling me I stink. I think that's fun. <laughs> I think that's part of baseball. Yeah. Uh, that'll be the part I miss the most is kind of just that general fan interaction whether it's you know cheering or even heckling um i think that you know that kind of stuff is always a lot of fun awesome last serious question for you before we ask you uh, just a few uh, kind of wrap up things but uh you know you mentioned before uh just with everything going on i wanted to ask you with the catcher you and the catcher uh just in terms of you know obviously not being around you know 
probably the catchers in your organization, uh, you know, and still keeping up with the bullpens. Are you someone who is usually, you know, more comfortable with someone as you, you know, get more innings in with them? Uh, you know, obviously with the Cardinals, you guys have a great catcher there who I'm sure helps you a lot. But for you, what's it like with the catchers uh, now? And is it going to be something that, you know, is going to be weird, you know, going back to them and being gone from them so long uh, when you have to throw to them again? Um, you know, we're, you know, we're, we've got the, you know, the, the video meetings and, you know, one thing the Cardinals, you know, are big on is communication. And we communicate really well. And, um, even in spring training with the younger catchers, we have meetings and, you know, we tell everybody what we like to throw and we, you know, we fill out some forms, some sheets and all the catchers get them. So, you know, so they're very familiar with what we're doing. I'm out there on the mound and we've got a lot of catchers who like to watch a lot of videos. So they're watching video guys that they haven't caught yet. So, um, you know, I have all the confidence in the world, uh, you know, whether it's Yachty, who's, you know, the guy, you know, the, 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 the godfather of catching, uh, you know, he's, he's the man, whether it's him or, or someone else, whether it's weeders and, and his wealth of experience or, uh, you know, or, or Kisner who's, who's, you know, learning every day and, and getting better every day and also a, a tremendous athlete and a tremendous catcher, or even the, you know, the, the minor league guys on the backfields in spring, I've got, I've got a hundred percent confidence in, in everybody the Cardinals have, um, catching. Awesome. For you, I just wanted to ask you a few, uh, you know, wrap up things, uh, nothing too serious for you. What's your favorite stadium to play in, uh, throughout the season besides, uh, you know, Bush stadium? Um, I like San Francisco okay. because the weather is always great. I like that cool weather. You know, it's got a pitcher's park kind of vibe. Um, it's kind of big. They've got a good crowd and you could be there like in August or September or even in the middle of summer and it's 70 degrees at night. Sometimes it's even chillier. And I think that's cool. And that's really nice for me. I, cold weather doesn't bother me. Um, I really like that. And I really like Wrigley because the fans, you know, 40,000 people telling me I stink. That's fun. Yeah. You know, that's baseball. That's, you know, that's part, you know, get your, your competitive spirit going. Uh, those two places are huge. Um, that's fun. I like coming to Miami because I'm from South Florida. I can see a lot of my friends and family. Oh. Uh, you know, I could say something good about just about every ballpark, but those three uh, that we traveled to I think are nice. I like Pittsburgh. Beautiful backdrop, you know, Three River Stadium. You yeah. got the uh, the bridges in the background. You can walk back. The hotel is walking distance, so when it's not hot at night, that's a nice walk across the bridges. Uh, they get pretty good fans. It's, it's it's a beautiful stadium. They've got nice grass in the outfield to lay on, like, before you play catch. They've got good grass. Um, I mean, they're all major league stadiums. They're all, you know, they're all beautiful stadiums. Yeah. What is one thing, uh, you know, being in the major leagues, what's one of the biggest, you know, perks, whether it's, you know, the food, the hotels, you know, a lot of guys that we talk to, you know, are really into, it's kind of weird, but, you know, are into the hotels and, you know, have their favorite hotels, uh, but food, hotels, you know, flights, you know, just being in the major leagues. I mean, what's one thing that, you know, is cool, uh, you know, 10, 15 years from now that you're going to look back and, you know, miss? Um... You know, what I'm going to miss is, is just, you know, meeting all the, the interesting people and, and, and all those perks, uh, interesting teammates and and the like. Uh, one of the perks, one of the things I find oddly neat, not that I'm like big into celebrities, but like when we go to a place, you know, like if we're out west in California, Dodger Stadium or uh, even in San Francisco, I think it's really neat. When you see like famous actors or singers yeah. like sitting on top of the dugout or close to the dugout, and you can see them and say hello, because they're like, oh, the ba like you know, all the actors want to be professional athletes, and all the athletes want to be actors and singers and kind of stuff like that. So they always think it's really cool to like say hi to you, and you think it's cool to say hi to them. Or if we have anyone in the you know famous people come into the locker room like for little tours like to say hi and stuff like that um i always think that's pretty pretty neat 
who's one person that you know you haven't met yet that you know you would want to meet uh you know famous uh you know actor singer you know is there one person that's you know on your uh dream list well the one guy that i was i was gonna try to reach out this year when we were in los angeles because he's an actor he's a big um he's a pretty big cardinals fan is john ham okay I, I believe i know he's he was at our game in los angeles in 2018 i think he he, he might have been in a game there last year as well but i didn't get a chance um to reach out like it didn't cross my mind but um i think it'd be super cool to meet him i'm a big fan um you know i was super into mad men i you know the other stuff i've been in i think he's a pretty funny guy and um, he's a big Cardinals fan, so I think that'd be oh. neat. I think he might enjoy that, like coming through the locker room or something. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. For you, you know, coming back to the States, obviously, you know, signing with the Cardinals, were there any other teams that you were, you know, considering, you know, at a high level, uh, you know, at any point? Uh, we had about four or five teams oh. um, in the final couple days, and all of the offers were pretty similar and it just made a lot of sense to go with St. Louis. Their spring training is in my hometown down here in Jupiter. And I've got some friends and family uh, that live in St. Louis. So I had some familiar faces there and it's a team that wants to, you know, that always wants to win. Um, You know, they're, they're doing their best to win and uh, you know, I'm doing my best to win. Second to last question for you. Just in terms of pitching, what's been so far in your career your you know most memorable either game inning you know maybe you're not even pitching uh, in the game but you know being a part of you know a game or even a series in the playoffs. I mean, what's something that just resonates with you? Uh, you know when you look at your career thus far. Uh, you know the playoff games are awesome. That's a totally different atmosphere. I love that. Um, I'll always remember those. Hopefully I get to pitch in a world series that, you know, that would probably that would take cool. the cake. Um, individually, um, I really enjoy the home runs I hit, which is, which, which is really nice. And that may be a thing of the past pitchers hitting. So there's that. And, um, the complete game shutouts, which you don't see as many these days, um, because of, you know, they're just keeping like, you know, pitch limits and counts and, not letting guys throw too much all the time. Yeah. Uh, so those are special too. Getting, you know, not even a shutout, but anytime you can get a complete game and be out there for all nine, I think that's special. I take great pride in that, give the bullpen a day off and, uh, you know, get a good workout in myself there. Absolutely. Last question for you. What's your craziest, you know, interaction with a fan, you know, a group of fans, you know, either at a game or, you know, off field. I mean, is there anything that, you know, has ever happened to you uh, that, you know, kind of been, you know, kind of out of the ordinary, uh, so to speak? Um, you know, I wish I had a, had a better one. Um, but not really, uh, you know, aside from people just kind of, you know, chirping at me from the stands during batting practice, you know, Chicago people, like I said, you know, at Wrigley, people get there early, you know, they're drinking, and if you're shagging batting practice, they're kind of yelling at you about this and that. Um, but nothing, uh, you know, nothing vulgar, nothing overly funny, uh, just standard, you know, standard fan interactions. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I wish I had, like I said, wish I had, like, a super funny story, yeah. <laughs> but I can't, I can't think of one off the top of my head. No, yeah, uh, you know, just some other guys, uh, you know, have had some, not crazy stories, but, you know, especially at Wrigley, I know you mentioned there a lot, uh, you know, having, you know, the guys or, you know, the rookies having to, you know, walk over to Starbucks, uh, you know, in their uniforms. That's just something that they used to uh, do, apparently. Uh, but, you know, just thanks for coming on, Miles. Uh, I know, uh, you know, you're busy with your family and everything. You know, I wish you all the best uh, this upcoming season, if there is a season. And, you know, hope that, you know, you and your family are safe and healthy and, you know, just looking forward to seeing what you do uh, in the upcoming seasons. Awesome. All right. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, Miles. Talk to you later. Yep. Bye. Yep, that was Miles Michaelis from the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, 
went over, played overseas for three years, came back, went was on the Cardinals in 2018-2019, signed through 2023, uh, was an all-star in 2018, uh, finished sixth in the Cy Young voting. Uh, great to have him on, great guy, uh, overall great person. We wish him and his family all the best, uh, staying safe. Thanks for listening to us again. Another great episode, probably the coolest uh, you know, interaction that we've had with someone just in terms of you know being a household name in Major League Baseball. So thanks, Miles, for coming on. Thank you to everyone listening thus far and that are going to listen in the future and you know, who have made it to this point in the podcast. Like, subscribe, send it to your friends, send it to family, send it to people that you know maybe you don't even talk to, just you know, send it to them. Why not? Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we thank you all, you know, it's you people that listening to this point that, you know, make us do it, make me do it, especially, uh, and, you know, it's just cool to see, uh, you know, some of the interactions that we've been able to get with some guys, and, you know, just great to hear from them, thanks for everyone, uh, thanks for Miles again, uh, you know, I'm sure he's busy during all this, as you mentioned, he has a bunch of, his three kids, you know, wife, uh, baseball shape cool though to you know get him for uh a couple minutes there and you know just hoping that he does his best uh, in the upcoming season cardinals always a team to watch for in the wild card and division race so you know hopefully he does you know his best uh you know like 2018 uh hopefully he gets back to that form and just thanks for everyone listening like subscribe do your thing uh get the views up on it and you know another big one you know we're gonna have some other you know cool ones coming out soon and thanks for listening have a safe day and you know everyone out there stay safe as well